Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh. Today we are checking out the Warhammer 40k Everything Explained Part Two. Now we're on we are 30 minutes in on the Harlequins, and this is gonna be a four part reaction. So I want to knock out the last two parts today and get both of those uploaded for you guys because I did miss yesterday. Had um, a busy day yesterday. That's one reason why I missed it. Uh, I appreciate you guys being in the comments explaining everything to me. That's been super awesome. Now, I have more information about the webway, how that works, why the Emperor wasn't able to access it, and how he was, like, wounded before he could, uh, how they didn't, the, um, the Eldar didn't invent it. They just know how to access it. Like, all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys sharing that with me. So, let's go ahead and jump into this one, and we will talk about it in the end. Don't you want to have some fun? The Harlequins are a bizarre race of Eldar. They're demonic clown performers they're like a weird mix of sander cohen from bioshock and Jin from league of legends but in a more clown theme they're they're artists of death and perfectors of their craft they do not belong to craft worlds or any of the weird drukari people they guard something called the black library which is this giant tome of never-ending knowledge deep in the heart of the eldar webway and also guarded by their god named kegarok i believe is how you pronounce his name he is the laughing god but it's the eldar's laughing god and these are the harlequins the harlequin clowns these are eldar clowns okay so imagine the things that an eldar these depraved individuals would find funny and this is the god of that it's it's a horror clown these are gods of horror for us normal people for them they're like oh ho, ho, it's so funny they're all dying horribly ho, 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 honk, honk. they're very bizarre and difficult to describe uh they've escaped the ruinous powers of slash somehow mm -hmm. but their main thing is guarding that black library and the harlequins just they're demon clown performers. They're barely any models on the tabletop. They're good in melee. They're, they're demon clowns. I, I'm not sure. I, I got a quote. It is too easy for an Eldar to embrace the obscene virtues of chaos, for Slaanesh is nothing more than a manifestation of the Eldar mind in its most wild and unconstrained form. Human morality is meaningless to the Eldar, and to the dark side of the Eldar mind, all life is to be expended at a whim. Cruelty and generosity are but the impulse of a moment. Beauty and sensuality are virtues that can be expressed in bloodshed just as easily as in song. To an unfettered Eldar mind, there is neither sanity nor madness, but merely a wave of perfect existence fulfilled by its own savage momentum. They're mm. very strange. The Harlequins, Drukhari, Eldar, they are an anomaly that make humans seem completely easy to understand in comparison. They range from rekindling their civilization to horrifying murder and also clowns. They're all over the place, but honestly, they represent quite well and are rather interesting, especially with the whole Sonesh murdering everyone bit. So, yeah, Eldar. Now, bugs. Ma, they following me, Ma. Oh, they following me. Oh, no, following me. <laughs> the bugs. The bugs. <laughs> the tyrannids. Oh, no, so now, now, I don't like the pause, but I do want to ask this question before I forget. So, what's going to happen when Slaanesh runs out of Eldar? If she murders all of them, how does she get, like, her sustenance or whatever? Or can she just start consuming other souls besides the Eldar? It seems like all her focus is on them. But what happens when they're all dead? I know they said the other ones kind of, like, sacrifice people to her energy, and that's what staves her off. But what if that's not enough, and then she consumes them? Will she just not? Like, how does she get, like, once they're dead or whatever? That just popped in my head now. Sorry. You want to talk something a lot more fun, a little more simple than all this crazy Eldar shenanigans? Let's talk the Tyranids. They're bugs. Do they look like Zerg? Hell yeah, they look like Zerg. You want to know why they look like Zerg? Because they were actually supposed to uh, be what Zerg were. Uh, apparently StarCraft was supposed to be a 40k game in the beginning. Hence why they look so much like Eldar, Zerg, and the Imperium of Man. Like, kind of space marine -y. Those marines, huh? They look a little bit space marine -y to me. I said that Maybe. when I watched the trailer. I don't know. Yeah. You really fucked up on that one, Games Workshop, didn't you? Tyranids are a giant infestation of unfathomable proportions. These are giant, extremely bio-advanced hive mind organisms that are basically all about absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to evolve and mutate to be extremely potent and powerful and kill and eat anything in their path they are probably the least evil 
faction in all of 40k because all they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom nom the entire galaxy. They hangry and we food. Also, this Tyranid hive mind has a presence in the warp. In fact, Tyranids in their own right have a massive presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow in the warp specifically, where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird ability to kind of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet. And how do you get help across the stars? Well, you need the warp because you need that for interstellar travel. So with people unable to call for help from the Tyranids, these are just easy pickings. And an entire giant Tyranid hive fleet comes out of orbit and just will massacre, absorbing all that biomass and turning them and all of their other Tyranids into even more advanced monsters. They come in Damn. so many varieties too, all in based on what is important. Tiny little ripper swarms for s scouting and having little dudes eat people up to the Hormagons, Termagons, and Gene Stealers, all the way to the Hive Guard and the Exocrines and the Swarm Lord, to Hive Tyrants and their giant battle fleets, and even something as crazy as the Hierophant Bio Titan. The Tyranids come in all forms and sizes depending on what they require. They are extremely good at anti-biological weaponry. There is no way you can plague them or blight them. They have extremely strong armor, you know, carapaces and such. Tyranids are, are nigh perfect organisms and are pretty spooky when it comes down to how they handle all of their genetic material. Keep feeding them, they'll keep evolving. They keep on creating new horrifying organisms to spread across the galaxy. And you know what the most terrifying part of the Tyranids is? We might be surrounded. There have been like around six or seven Tyranid hive fleets, behemoth, Kronos, all these different kinds of hive fleets, and they've all arrived in the galaxy from different points. Different sections of the Milky Way galaxy have had different Tyranids come through. And that is horrifying, because as far as we know, we could just be surrounded on all sides by Tyranids. The only reason yeah. you may not hear a whole lot about Tyranids is because it's a little bit hard to have a bunch of story off of one hive mind genocidal monsters all these giant bugs swarming in killing and eating everybody and evolving well, i mean as cool as there are some cool characters the swarm lord old one eye you can't really have a whole bunch of major character based stories around them as awesome as they are they're simple they want to eat you they want to eat you and absorb your biomass they are simple bugs if you want something a little more complex Talk gene stealer cults. I can have all the pot I want, I get around faster than walking, and wherever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. Gene stealer <laughs> cults are a special brand of Tyranid that can slowly infect themselves into different kinds of society. And by infecting them, they can rise up to where they all pray and believe in these re like regular humans, pray and believe into their Tyranid hive mind gods. And these brood lords, and I think they're called patriarchs, all can turn an entire world all based into gene stealers. And these are called gene stealer cults. An entire hive world of the Imperium can be turned into nothing but servants of the Tyranid masters just by infecting them and screwing with their genetic code a little bit. They also have this cool like Mad Max look which is really neat. They are definitely yeah. one of the bigger threats to the Imperium besides Chaos. I, I keep saying biggest threat to the Imperium. They're up there though, because you, Dingus, stepped on a bug in middle school. Asshole. There is a cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade, it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose that functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. And all we can do is to try to stop the swarms of bioengineer monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salvage our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, it must know us as nothing but prey. Tyranids, they're cool. But are they as cool as the orcs? <laughs> it's crazy you see a lot of sci-fi stuff inspired by this like a lot of sci-fi stuff i watch orcs, 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 sounds very orcs, similar orcs 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 i fucking love orcs so yes the the green monsters the green tide the green skins these orcs they are in fact a race in 40k 
The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons, they're big boys, they have axes, and they have got big old teeth and they want to kill everything, and there are so many of them. The only reason they haven't taken over in the entire galaxy is they can't stop murdering each other. Orcs are so cool. Orcs don't have philosophy. Orcs don't have existential crisis. What matters is who's the biggest orc. You listen to that guy, because he the biggest orc. He big orc. Big orc knows best. You win through the power of imagination. Of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage war with machines that should not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. How does one battle an enemy that defies all logic? As an orc, you're, you're enjoying life. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can. The biggest orc is the man who understands everything. He is the boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent, which is just hilarious to me. Those are orcs. You're, you fight. You like to fight. Your whole purpose is to fight. You wage war because you want to wage war. You got your boss over there, and you better listen to the boss because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you and make you an example for the other orcs. And then you can't fight because orc dead. And orc dead is orc dead can't fight because the orc dead. Orcs. They scrap together machines out of parts that don't make any sense. And because they believe, they have the mental imagination that that machine will run, it'll run. If that machine's out of gas, you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs, and the biggest orc is behind the wheel, and you run out of gas, some orc behind you is like, oh, oh, Zog, we're out of gas. And the big orc is like, no, we're not. I filled the fucking gas tank up earlier, and all the other orcs are like, oh, yeah, I, w you did do that. And then you turn the, the fucking mech back on, and it works again. Does it have That's gas? Insane. Probably not, but it works through the power of imagination. They paint That's things red because it makes them think that it goes faster. They paint things purple because it's the sneakiest color. You want to know why? You ever seen a purple orc? Didn't fucking think so. Orcs are also like ancient as hell. They're back in the Eldari time frame. But that, back then they were called Crooks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent. Now they're just orcs and they're big, dumb, and they smack things. But they're pretty spooky. They're not very well armored, but they hit really hard. And it's called the Green Tide because there are so many orcs. There are about as many orcs as there are Tyranids. Maybe more. Who knows? But they keep on, you know, murdering each other, so it's not too bad of an issue. Orcs are entirely comic relief. Their stuff is slapped together. That makes no sense. Their vehicles don't work the way they're supposed to, but they work because they think it works, because they imagine that it works. Orcs care only about who is the biggest orc, and they will follow the biggest orc. And then if they want to be the biggest orc, they'll challenge the biggest orc. And then when they go and they issue a wa, a wa is just war in orc, they murder everybody and everything in this giant tide of green orcs who are just excited to be hitting something. They don't care that they're hitting Eldar or the Imperium or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to beat shit up. That's orcs. And on the tabletop, Man. they are a total coin flip, and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc player. I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy or that guy. Orc players have this kind of fun to them because when you play them, you are completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's the thing. Guardsmen, Imperial Guardsmen, when they shoot, they roll a dice, and on a four up, they'll hit their target. They have a 50% chance. Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher because they're well-trained. Adeptus Custodians, they hit on twos because they're just super well-trained. Orcs, they hit on a five or higher. But if they roll a six, they get to make another shot with anything from the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whim. One of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill an orc. They're so wacky and silly. But the thing That's is, awesome. if you roll well, you roll high, and you keep rolling high, you are going to crush people. And if you don't, you lose. I mean, that's what you get when you play orcs. That's what happens when you play orcs. It's a coin flip. Which is why you can't be a salty bitch when you play orcs, because 
things won't go your way. It's just the roll of the dice. You're playing a dice game. But if you're going to have fun and you want to be stupid and you want to be silly, you're going to play some damn orcs. But on the opposite side of the fun part of this, let's talk about the Necrons. All right, so we're going to stop on the Necrons because we're already um, 15 minutes in. I want to do the, like the 15-minute gaps so it's not stretched out too long. Um, so questions from this one. So I don't really think I have any questions. He did a really good job like explaining. Um, I mean, in general, the guy's pretty good at explaining stuff. It just usually went the more statements he makes, just the more questions I have. But from listening to most of this, it just kind of really, really – nailed it in like how much stuff is inspired by warhammer um uh, that's the main thing i didn't really get too many questions about this so the mute this really quick so the the what do you call it the 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 i'm saying wrong already but the the tyranids like the ones who like the 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 gene splicer ones the ones who actually them right here how they they, they worship one thing and they kind of have like i think he said like a hive mind or what have you and um they go in like they worship this god and all that jazz like all this stuff like i almost say because they don't have as much like um you know mechanical stuff and everything but i think i would say it's kind of similar to like the the uh to what do you call to the wraith from like star trek like how they come in and they like um they absorb they can convert i think you can they, they like just absorb human people like on, on like um like their biomatter, their energy, they're just coming like absorb you, so they can live for a long time. And they they fly on hive ships and stuff, similar to uh, the Eldar. That's one like I feel like they put the like somebody is into Warhammer and they just put pieces. They, they put these characters characters together from pieces of other characters they've seen in this. So how like the the like how they show up the Terranit. I'm saying I'm probably just t whatever, but the T people when they show up. And how he said they uh they just come and absorb all their organic ma matter um the tyranids so when they show up and kind of absorb all their organic matter on the planet and then kind of like move on and keep going it reminds me of what he called the replicators the replicators from Stargate do that where they're they're mechanical they're not like bio creatures like that but they could just show up and they absorb everything on like a planet and they, they that becomes a, rep a replicator homeworld and they continue to go around and just continue doing that that's the whole thing is to keep on uh, replicating so. It, it just watches stuff like man, it's crazy. Like just so many people just feel like they, I just feel like they, it's a hosh posture. They kind of mix features from characters from Warhammer to make a character to make characters on uh, other sci-fi shows. Uh, like Hive Mind, like of course one of the most well-known Hive Minds I can think of is like the Boar from Star Trek. And then also when he's talking like how the orcs can just like essentially will stuff into working or will things like that's crazy. That's super powerful. That you can just essentially, like, I won't say like like will something into existence. So I'm I'm guessing because they're so overwhelmed by like rage and always want to fight and want to slaughter things. Like you said, orcs just want to smash things and love war and just do it because they can. I'm guessing that's why they don't just kind of and then they don't. He said there's no they don't have reasoning and all that jazz. So I'm assuming that's why they don't just collectively like wish like I don't know all the Astartes would just die or something like that because if they had that ability that that is. That'll suck. I guess it'll ruin the entire like story, so they have to be kind of dumb and clunky. But to have the power, the ability to just will stuff into existence is ridiculous. That is crazy. I didn't. I would never have thought orcs could do something like that. Just from watching the other Warhammer stuff and watching um, Hell Reach and stuff. That's that's bananas. They like you said. They sound kind of fun to play with though, just because they're so wacky and insane. Um. Yeah, man. Just just I don't know. Just watching a, a lot of the stuff. Like you could just like I feel like like uh not exactly but like um what do you call was it Stormship Troopers? Like I watched that movie so long ago. I was really young when I watched that movie, but having like like having all like the the wave of bugs and stuff, and having like to fight them off kind of reminds me like how some of these these drawings and creatures remind me of that as well. So I like I said, you can really see the inspiration uh, from other sci-fi stuff on this. In this one, like I said, as far as I don't really have any, I don't have any questions. Um, I think the orcs sound pretty cool. I never, I, I didn't even think the think much of the orcs at all until like listening to this. Just the fact that they, like I said, they can just will something into working. Um, and then, oh yeah, about the the Eldar. Like I was like like Slanesh. Like they said, they like torture people. Like there's a group of Eldar that torture people and all that jazz, and wait for you to heal and torture you again because that's like a that energy or what have you goes to Slanesh. And 
they and that's enough to side her off for now. He said you don't exactly know, but it's enough to side her off for now. But does she have an end game, or do like Chaos Demons not have an end game? So what happens? Like, is there any lore about what happens when she does like consume all the Eldar? Uh, that mean it'll probably never happen because it can end it. But like, is there any lore on that if she does? Uh, what can she feed on besides the Eldar? Since they essentially just she came into existence because of them, and like their desire, their gluttony, their like over whatever with sex and all the jazz, she came into existence. So what is she without them? And why would she want to just continue to consume something that like a race of people that she wouldn't exist without? Um, yeah, just curious. All right, I think that's all. That's all I have to say about this one, man. I'm, I'm enjoying this. I want to um, I'll make sure I get the second part up today as well. So let's go ahead and end this right here. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. And I'll see you in the next video. Later.